basic. Or not so basic. This is gonna be a rant video and also a bit of a tag video as well. I mentioned this concept in one of my Insta stories and some of you had responded and said yes please do a discussion video on this, uh, we need to clarify this, we need to talk about it. Even a YouTuber that I follow, Lady Andre, uh, also messaged me and said you should definitely do a tag and I thought that was a great idea. So this is my first ever tag video and uh, I don't know how to tag people, I'll figure that out. Uh, I think I am able to now see that? I don't know. I'll figure it out. But I'll I'll write down um, people that I'm going to tag in the description box. I don't know a lot of people personally on YouTube yet, but uh, if you guys have uh, people that you think uh, should do this video, then tag them in the comments and then I'll also try to tag them as well. So I'm here to talk about basic luxury, and I'm not talking about luxury basics you should own, okay? That's a different video of staples you should have in your wardrobe. I'm talking about the word basic. Basic that means somewhat demeaning. It somewhat means that you have no style or you're a basic B. We hear this term that's been thrown around a lot in videos and I think we need to address how we're approaching talking about this. And it implies that mainstream luxury has just become basic all of a sudden. I wanted to do this video for a really long time in response to a couple of videos that I've seen floating around. They're all done with good intention and with good fun. And these are on YouTube uh, discussing once popular luxury items that have now uh, supposedly gone out of fashion and are now deemed basic. And by basic, I mean outdated, less desirable, less fashionable, and no longer being worn or belonging to the fashion elite. It is more being worn by commoners such as you and I. Now there's one thing that I can't wrap my head around, and that is using the term luxury and basic in one phrase or in one sentence. That is an oxymoron. Luxury is luxury. Basic is basic. You cannot equate the two. I mean, luxury is expensive. How can you call it basic? It's not attainable for a lot of people. So it's very inaccurate to call luxury basic. And some of these videos are done out of good fun. And there's always a disclaimer to not take it to heart, to not take offense, and blah 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 blah. But while I don't take offense, um, I, you know, and I'll explain why in a bit later, but the underlying message is still there. It doesn't change the underlying message. You're still saying that these things are basic and if you're wearing these things, they're basic or you should be buying these things that they're basic. And it creates almost like a class division within this YouTube luxury community. And I don't think that we should be doing that. And no, nobody's attacked me or anything like that. I mean, I'm a very small channel on this on, in YouTube world. Uh, nobody's um, said anything mean to me or anything like that. I mean, sometimes you get spam comments here and there, but I mean, there hasn't been anything like that. So, uh, but I'm noticing something that is very dangerous about being part of this luxury community, whether you are a YouTube creator, an Instagram creator, or a follower or a subscriber. There is something dangerous here that is going to blow up in all of our faces very, very soon. Luxury has now become fast fashion. I've been predicting this for a long time coming, even before I started YouTube. You know, as you know, I've been watching a lot of these videos in my spare time. It's something that I don't even watch TV anymore, to be honest. I don't have time for that. But I've been noticing this coming on for a really, really long time about luxury now slowly becoming fast fashion if you are part of this community. Before this online luxury community sort of took flight, before these videos existed, before uh, Instagram existed, access to information about luxury goods and brands was very limited. Like you really didn't know about these products until you went into boutique. And thanks to these videos and thanks to these creators, people who didn't have access to going to these boutiques all of a sudden could now window shop at home 
even if they couldn't afford these uh, luxury goods, they still got the information, they still got the access, they still got to know about the items, they still got knowledge about the items, and if in the future they ever wanted to buy one of these items, then they could purchase it if they saved up for it. But before you never had that, you, you kind of, it was part of your community or your group and that's how you got to know about certain designer labels, but other than that, it really wasn't accessible to a lot of people. Before you had to buy magazines and understand the magazines and, and, and you know what I mean, and print media used to turn over really slowly and now with digital media and we have videos, we're always seeing the next best thing, we're always seeing uh, different luxury brands and sometimes seeing them over and over again, you can get fed up of them before you even had a chance to buy that item or wear that item or see that item in person. And we're almost bombarded by these, these products. Like you open up Instagram, you see the newest it bag, you see so many photos of it and you kind of get a taste of it and then you're over it and then you want something new. And I realize this sort of feeling or I guess this uh, phenomenon of digital media when I was planning for my own wedding. Before, in the past, like I remember years and years ago uh, when my cousins were getting married and such, to shop for Indian bridal wear or any bridal wear, you had to go to a boutique or you looked at magazines or you attended wedding shows and it was a big thing. And that's how you kind of found out what was in style and what was available. And those magazines you had to usually go buy, they were expensive, they were like $20 and you had to go to these shows and spend money on tickets to kind of get insider knowledge of what is new and out there. And now I feel like those are more obsolete and we have Pinterest and Instagram and I remember going on Pinterest and I was planning my wedding while I was in school um, and being overwhelmed by so many designs and so many pictures that as I saw the same dress over and over again, I was over it. And I'm like, well, that's been done. I, I, don't, I don't want that anymore. I want something different. And because of such a quick turnover of those pictures, I became ravenous and insatiable. And I wasn't satisfied. I found it really hard to come to a decision and really hard to like anything. And social media has turned, I mean, it's not that I hate social media. I love I, I love the fact that we have this community and I and I mean I'm creating videos on this, so I'm kind of being a bit of a hypocrite. But um, social media has turned luxury fashion into fast fashion. We've become desensitized to the price tags attached to these things. When I was younger, um, in the community or the world that I have, or even now the people that I know spending $300 on a handbag or $500 on a handbag is is luxury and it's it was something that was unheard of. And now spending over $3,000 or $5,000 on a handbag, we don't even flinch. And we've accepted that we can spend this sort of money on an item. And that is too much money to spend on an item and then label it basic when a few too many people start to wear it. We've normalized spending copious amounts of money on items way more often than we should. And you think with a luxury item that once you purchase it, you're satisfied and you use it, but no, we don't stop there. We keep going. Luxury fashion imagery has become so accessible to us via Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram that we all have become, or most of us have become, ravenous and insatiable very quickly. Luxury was meant to last. It was something that you purchased for for life basically and you used and you loved and you cherished and you passed down. It was something that you bought once and you didn't have to worry about, it was evergreen, but now it seems as though these items are turning over way too quickly. I mean, for example, if you look at Bottega Veneta, I mean, I don't own anything from Bottega Veneta, but it seems as though they're coming out with a new bag every couple of months and while the last release hasn't even hit peak yet, a new item drops on the scene. So why does seeing things everywhere repeatedly all of a sudden become basic and out of fashion? This phenomenon is not new. We're just seeing it in a new context, in a new virtual digital context. So it made me think back to philosophy class when I was in university. I you know, took a few electives and I loved philosophy in high school. I loved it in university as well. And I urge you to read some uh, theories uh, just in your spare time. Now we have um, audiobooks and stuff like that. I think Audible has the book that I'm gonna be mentioning. 
um, but there's so many that, things that you can learn and it is valuable to read because you can really uh, critique your world, you can enhance your critical thinking skills. So the theory of the leisure class is a text that an economist slash sociologist named Thorstein Veblen wrote at the turn of the 20th century. And in this book, he describes the forces that create and maintain class division. He talks about a term called conspicuous consumption and positional goods, which now we call Veblen goods. So he coined the term conspicuous consumption to basically mean that in order to demonstrate your elite status and your elite class, you spend disproportionately more money on goods than they are actually worth. So for example, take a Chanel bag. It's a leather handbag, yes, there's lots of quality, but um, we can all argue that it's probably not worth the $10,000 mark that it is now in Canada, but um, we, we do spend it, right? The members of the leisure class are those that engage in conspicuous consumption in order to demonstrate their elite class, in order to demonstrate their social worth. And they do this to impress the rest of society through the manifestation of their social power and prestige, be it real or perceived. So subsequently people in other social classes, particularly classes that are below that leisure class, will then mimic this conspicuous consumption behavior in order to be more like the leisure class. So if I relate this to this community, okay, the influencers are the leisure class. So if we use Veblen's uh, theory, the influencers are the leisure class and they are influencing us to purchase items to be more like them. And as a result, these influencers then have to purchase new items in order to always maintain that class division. So there will always be a chase. The influencers will have to step away from the items that are now becoming too common and now go towards newer items in order to maintain that influencer class compared to the rest of the following. I can imagine how difficult and stressful and perhaps even expensive that must be. And it's not their fault, it's part of their job. These people work in fashion, this is their world. They're surrounded by fashion designers, they're attending fashion shows, they are expected to wear and buy the next newest thing. They can't be like the rest of us. That's, that's what an influencer is. They're supposed to be different. And because they're always exposed to the newest releases and all that, I can imagine how very quickly they get fed up of some of these items because they're hanging around with people that are wearing these items, they're attending fashion shows, they're being gifted some of these items. And just like how I described wedding planning and I was on Pinterest and Instagram and I was being bombarded by just images and I got fed up, imagine how quickly they get fed up. So simply put, if luxury goods become too accessible, they become less desirable. So let's talk about Chanel and let's talk about their price increases. It's a Veblen good. Veblen goods are those goods whose desire increases in proportion to how they increase in price. Anyway, so I thought I'd just explain that so that, you know, you can kind of get why we sort of feel this way, right? This is not new. Uh, Veblen talked about this. And if we apply it to this context, now we understand why some people may deem things basic or out of style. And, you know, yes, things do go out of fashion. They come back in fashion. But I find that it's such a risk with luxury items because they're so expensive. Like we can't it's not sustainable. It really is not sustainable to buy items, wear them, and then they're out of fashion and now we have to buy new ones. So anyway, I'm going to talk about some of the items that have been deemed basic in all the videos that I mentioned. Um, not, I don't own all of these items, but I'm going to talk about why I don't think they're basic, but rather they are trailblazers that are classics in their own right. And you should be proud to own some of these items. I'm sorry. Who are you calling basic? <sighs> Gucci. Gucci seems to be getting slammed left, right, and center. They're getting a lot of hate. Especially what I'm seeing is anything that has to do with the Marmont line. Okay, I have a pair of uh, Marmont uh, loafers. Okay, this is the only 
Gucci item aside from some flip-flops that I have that I own. Marmont bags, Marmont belts, the Gucci t-shirts, the Dionysus bag that isn't the Marmont line but it's more of a classic uh, item from their line. I don't own that. The Gucci Ace sneakers. And Gucci in the last couple of years really really skyrocketed in popularity when they had a change in their creative director and it rose so quickly that it's come down just as quickly and is just kind of, you know, now more stable. But particularly the Marmont line, whether you have the belt, whether you have the bag, whether you may have the shoes or not, but I don't really have, hear so much about the shoes. It's more the belt and the bag that are getting slammed. Um, those are the ones that are being deemed basic. But here's the thing, I've seen the Marmont belt worn quite a bit. Um, even in my vicinity, even in my, not my social circle, but walking around in the city, and I live in a pretty big city, I did see people wearing the Marmont belt. Not as much as I see it on Instagram and YouTube, but I do see people wearing it. And yes, I've seen a lot of it. I'm not saying that I'm sick of it. It's, it's a great belt. And here's the thing, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, the Marmont belt is a trailblazer in itself. It kind of set the scene for wearing a big logo belt. Uh, I'm not talking about Louis Vuitton, I'm not talking about Hermes, those have always been there, but Gucci really set the trend for wearing a logo belt to cinch in the waist on just about anything, whether it's a blazer, a dress, if you want to put it on a pair of pants, that's fine, but it was a fashion statement. And then other designers came on scene. Dior came out with belts. Valentino, you got the oversized V belt. It set the scene for other designers to create belts. Chanel even came out with belts. Chanel never did belts. If, uh, I mean, they did chain belts, but I never saw logo belts from Chanel. And here, Chanel's doing logo belts with kind of like a brooch detail on a, on a belt. So Gucci set the scene for that, okay? It was a trailblazer for that trend. With the Ace sneakers as well, I don't think, I mean, I don't own Ace sneakers. I only started getting into designer sneakers now, but when those Ace sneakers came out, I don't think any other luxury brand made wearing designer sneakers as popular as Gucci did. Um, that comfort uh, in the form of luxury was made normal, was made fashionable. Uh, it was, there was utility there. It made luxury user friendly and that is a trailblazing idea on its own and then very quickly on the scene you started seeing other luxury brands coming out with luxury designer sneakers. So I won't be calling owning Gucci basic. Uh, it's, it's a design house in its own right. I don't own a lot of Gucci items. As I said, I just own a pair of shoes and flip-flops. When it was popular, I didn't buy it because uh, some of the stuff wasn't my style. It just wasn't. So. Um, it's not because I was fed up of it. I, it's not that I won't ever buy Gucci. If I do see something that is really nice, of course I'll buy it. But, um, you know, I, it's, it's something that I just wouldn't call basic and you shouldn't feel bad if you own a belt or you own a bag. If you love it and you wear it, wear it. It's, it was a lot of money. Don't let anybody tell you that you're basic. The next item getting slammed are the Valentino Rock Stud heels. Whether you have the higher heel version, the 100 millimeter height, or the kitten heel version, which is I think 70 millimeters, this style, the patent uh, pump with the ankle straps, with the gorgeous glistening champagne gold rock studs, like they're just so beautiful. It's such a iconic shoe. As you can see, I have several colors. I have um, this Platino Gold. I have the Poudre uh, color as well in nude. I have baby pink, I have black, and I have... This isn't all of them, but um, maybe I got went overboard. But honestly, these shoes take my breath away. I Sadly, I don't wear them as much as I, I should uh, just because of my lifestyle. But when I do, these are a stunning shoe. I, I still think they're beautiful when the rock studs catch the light it's just so pretty and in a tasteful way they look like jewelry on your feet literally if you pick the right size these are very comfortable you've got straps that hold your foot in and stabilize your foot as you walk so walking in a high heel is now far more comfortable than wearing just a simple pump the utility and comfort is there women or men can walk around the, in these for longer hours than your standard 100 millimeter pump. This style has been going strong for about 
10 years now. It comes back every season in various colors. They have a classic color range as well. I think this is a classic shoe. This is not basic. Aside from social media, and I know the people that worked in this industry, they saw these a lot and probably they're over it, but in my world, in my social circle, I don't really know anybody that owns these or wears these. Maybe I've ran into one person that I know who has these, but other than that, I don't see a lot of people wearing these. When I walk around on the street, I don't see a lot of people wearing these either. So if I didn't look at YouTube and Instagram, I wouldn't be fed up of these. I see the, I don't see these in my vicinity all the time. Yes, I see photos of it, but that's fine. That's great. It just validates the fact that I bought great shoes. These are classics. These are iconic. I would never think that these are dated in any way. I'm of the opinion that if it's not broken, don't fix it. This Rockstead style was a trailblazing style in its own right. There was no other shoe I don't think that I saw that is like this. Yes, there were strappy heels, but nothing, nobody went on and put these badass looking rock studs and you think up close like, wow, it's too much. But once you put them on, they look so elegant and pretty. I don't think I've seen a shoe like this before. So to me, this is a trailblazing style that it's iconic in its own right and it is a classic and definitely not basic. The next items being roasted are behind me, the Belmont Blazer. This item I remember I purchased a few years ago in Paris um, from the Belmont Boutique on Rue Saint-Honoré and this, I didn't even know this was popular. I didn't even know that Belmont was a, a thing. I really did not know. I saw the blazer and I loved it. I loved the oversized buttons. I loved the exaggerated silhouette. I just, it was something that it was everything in a blazer that I wanted and it looked so good on when I wore it. Uh, I probably have a mod shot video filmed somewhere and I'll put it in. But I loved, I loved the look of this and um, it was such a great experience purchasing it. And after I purchased it, I realized how popular this really was and how people were really, how sought after this really was. So since then, I've been able to purchase it in seasonal colors, so in red and in a cream. I did unbox this in an earlier video. Clearly, I saw the tags on it because I purchased this for spring and we were in quarantine and didn't go anywhere, so I still have yet to remove the tags on here. And I was able to purchase some of the seasonal variations for a little bit of a discount on online retailing sites like Farfetch and Louisa V. Aroma. But other than that, I haven't... I have not run into anybody that I know who is in my social circle or any of my friends on my Instagram. I haven't seen them wear this blazer. And if I've ever worn this blazer, the most I'll get is somebody that gives me a compliment that's saying, oh, I love your outfit, and then we move on from there. Nobody says that you have a Belmont blazer. Like, nobody tells me, oh, like, I love that. They just say I have a nice outfit and we move on from there. We don't have a store in Toronto, that could be why. Uh, we have concessions at department stores, but that's about it. I haven't seen somebody wear this blazer. I don't know, maybe you have, but I haven't. Again, the Balmain blazer is a trail blazing style. I don't think I've seen a blazer with this cut, the exaggerated shoulder pads. I haven't seen the statement buttons all rolled into one. I haven't seen this style of blazer in another brand before. Um, this is a very feminine silhouette. It cinches you in the waist. It gives you kind of like the hourglass shape. It's a very fitted blazer. Um, I haven't seen that in any other brand. Maybe now there are some brands that are you now copying or creating dupes, but this is one of the first to come on scene. And for that reason, this is a trailblazing, iconic style. It comes back every year, different variations. Yes, some seasonal colors go on sale, but the classic black rarely get a discount, but sometimes you can, but rarely, it's very rare. It's a staple and classic in their line and it is here to stay. So no, I don't think that a $2,000 blazer is basic in any way. The next item being roasted are the Manolo Blahnik Hangi C pumps, whether you have the 70 millimeter height as I do or the 100 millimeter height as I do, or sorry, 90 millimeter, these are the classic Carrie Bradshaw Sex in the City shoe. Uh, I'm just showing you one for example because I don't want to go through my closet, but I have several colors of these. 
uh, blue, yellow, emerald green. There's a lot of colors that I have and they are very comfortable shoes. These are kind of the shoes that I can walk around all day in if I wanted to. I think these are a trailblazing style. They came out with jewel tone colors, which you never really saw. So you get yellow, you get red, you get hot pink, you've got electric blue, purple, and then you stick on a very exaggerated shiny brooch. Now I have this, I'm showing you a non-jewel color, I'm showing you black velvet, but um, this is what I could reach for easily, but um, you never saw that, and now you're seeing brands come out with, like, I mean, I know Mino Moati's uh, hot on the scene, and now they're coming out with those shoes with the brooch, which I think are kind of trying to be like Manolo Blahnik, except you've got a flared trumpet heel. Um, but these were one of the first ones to come on scene, having this brooch and very comfortable style, very feminine look. I don't think that these are basic in any way or form. Yes, I've probably seen a couple of people wear these, but not to a point where I'm seeing every single woman wearing these shoes. On Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, yes, I do see them, but that's because I'm actively looking for those videos. It's not like I'm being bombarded. I'm searching for them. I'm engaging in the luxury content. So I'm looking for that material or I'm, I'm looking for that imagery. So no, these aren't basic. So using Veblen's theory, items from Gucci, items from Manolo Blahnik, items from YSL or Saint Laurent, or items from Balmain do go on sale. You can get them at a discount here and there. And that is one of the reasons why they become more attainable for us, because they do sometimes offer a discount or a sale. And therefore, you lose the appeal of some of these items. You lose that snob appeal. So the elite class or the leisure class doesn't really want to buy these items because now they're more attainable and accessible for the masses. So anytime a Veblen good, if it goes down in price, you lose the desirability, you lose the snob appeal, and it's not fit for the leisure class anymore. They want to move on to something else. I'm going to talk about two iconic bags. I do not own these. These are from Louis Vuitton. It is a Louis Vuitton Neverfull and a Louis Vuitton Speedy. Anything monogram, damier ben, but particularly monogram, is also being labeled as basic. I don't think that's the case. I don't own these items. I mean, I own some um, monogram uh, SLGs, but I don't own any bags and such like that. I don't have a Neverfull or a Speedy. I don't think these are basic. The Speedy is a bag with a lot of history. Um, it's been around for many, many, many years and it is a classic and here to stay. So no, I wouldn't say it's a basic. Um, the Neverfull, clearly they're doing something right. The fact that it's coming back every single year and it is so popular, I wouldn't call it basic. And yes, yeah, some people will still say, no, you know, you're a basic B for having a Neverfull. Um, I don't think so. I, I think it was a unique concept and it's time like to have an oversized tote bag. And, um, and and have it monogram. So clearly they're doing something right and I wouldn't call it basic. And if you have one, you have some a classic piece. It's expensive and it's classic, it's iconic. Don't think it's basic and don't let anybody tell you that it's basic. The next item. The red soles were also getting slammed. As you can see, I have these. <laughs> I haven't worn them, uh, but I did buy them. Uh, so. The Christian Louboutin shoes uh, with the red soles, these were all the rage a couple years ago. I find that they're not as popular on social media as they once were. So I bought into it and these are the Corneal style. These were the only style that my wide ass feet could walk in. But as you can see, they've hardly been worn. I bought them when they were all the rage and now they're being ditched pretty much. And I can argue that perhaps the Pigalle style uh, are a classic. They have a classic shape with a trailblazing feature of a red sole. They keep coming back and they are a classic. Uh, so here you can see I do have little jelly cushions in the uh, ball of the foot. But I originally bought the nude pair. I never thought I could fit into the Louboutin shoes. Um, but I did try them on in the Yorkville boutique and I purchased them in the nude color. And they just blended in with my skin tone so well. I've never been able to find nude color shoes that literally melt into my skin. And they were very comfortable. So I did buy them. But um, sadly, I've only worn them maybe once. 
and that's about it and I don't know why that is so maybe because my lifestyle doesn't really call for heels it's unfortunate that social media overplays these items but it's overplayed for us because we actively seek out this content you don't see your everyday person who is not part of this community recognizing these items or knowing these items or even knowing how much they are I guess by the same convention, the same thing can be said about the Chanel Classic flap. I see videos of this bag everywhere um, on YouTube. I think if you put in a search, you'll see thousands of videos on reviewing or unboxing the Chanel Classic flap in black with gold hardware or black with silver hardware. So would the Chanel Classic flap be considered basic because the videos are everywhere and we see so many photos and images of this. Hell no. I would never consider this to be basic. But nobody's saying that it's basic. I haven't heard anybody say it's basic because I guess Chanel is a veblen good. They don't come down in price. But by the same token, I mean, we could, if we looked at the same rationale, then one would even call this basic because we see it overplayed and it's just everywhere. So, but nobody's really attacking Chanel here. So for some influencers to say that they're fed up with such and such items is a reflection of their world. As I said, they work in fashion, they work with people who are always wearing these items, they're always exposed to these new and upcoming things, they're expected to be at the forefront. So I can understand why they would get fed up. But if there are videos being created for people like us watching them, we need to really uh, critically think and you know understand where they're coming from but not take offense to it or not all of a sudden now assume that what we have worked so hard to purchase and collect is now considered basic and now I can't wear it anymore. So I want you to think, what is luxury for your world? Do the people around you wear this stuff? I mean, I don't really see anybody wearing Manolos. I don't really see a lot of people wearing Chanel around me. Do you see this in your physical world? Do you see these items in your physical world? I don't. I see them on YouTube and Instagram and that's about it. And that's kind of the reason why I started this channel is because I didn't really have anybody to talk about this stuff with. At the end of the day, you buy luxury for you. Luxury is luxury. It's to make you feel better. It's to make you feel good. It's to make you feel elevated. So buy what you like. Buy for yourself, don't care about what people think, and definitely never think any of your luxury items are basic. So this is gonna be a tag video. I wanna see you guys flex your basic yet not so basic items. Let me know what you guys own that have been deemed basic but you don't think are basic. I'm gonna tag a few people. At first I'm gonna tag Andre. She was the one who told me uh, after I mentioned this concept to turn it into a tag video so I'm gonna definitely tag her. She's super fabulous so if you don't follow her already um, I will uh, link her channel below. I'm gonna I'm gonna write the names in underneath. There's so many people that I'm gonna tag but I'm gonna tag everybody else and uh, if you haven't been tagged or if you think somebody else should be doing this video then definitely let them know and let's start a discussion. Okay guys I will see you in my next video.